crypto is becoming a recognized asset class and it's very, very risk on. You might think like junk bonds, but the concept is crypto trades 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It doesn't sleep like the stock market. And because of its risk on nature, you can actually look at Bitcoin to better understand what could happen with the major indices. You can see it really, really clearly here. And we're going to talk about it in today's video. Stay tuned. If you've never looked at crypto before, you'll want to start looking now. Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS and the inventor of the CTKS method and Borsog Trading. If you're new, a very warm welcome and welcome back KS family. And please note, I don't have WhatsApp or Telegram. From my 30 plus years in financial markets, I explain the smart money mindset to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love, gaining real wealth and positive excellence in the process. In this episode, we're going to look at how crypto can front run main markets. Crypto is incredibly sensitive to risk on and risk off movements. And when we look at the main markets and masterclass students, you get my live chart in TM6, we saw the VIX continuing to spike down that draws risk on sentiment into the market and we can see junk bonds just going for it at the moment and we saw the dxy fail to hold a level of support and come down that brought yields down with it and bond prices up gold was a beneficial recipient of such news when looking at the spy the s p 500 etf what we can see, very, very strong resistance levels were taken out, but there's a lot of resistance with the S&P 500 right now in, internally in the SPY. And these particular levels, these resistance levels and support levels are created through the CTKS method, which looks at all of price history, not just recent price history. And what we can see, there's a lot of sellers coming in here at the present time, trying to push the buyers down. The SPY is currently 406.87 and a post at 406. We can see two levels of structural resistance above 408.38 and 410.26. These levels are actually standards based analysis. Taking into consideration all of price history, we can see two levels of support below, one at 404.88 and one at 401.38. Overall, global markets have been doing very, very well. Turning to the DXY, the US dollar currency index, we indeed saw prices go down or the DXY value go down to that smart money buy level at 104.391 and then it spiked up to the smart money resistance level at 105.357. You can see just how powerful these SL lines actually are. And what is the DXY currently doing? It's just coming down currently 104506 as mentioned before keeping your eye on the dxy is a really really good idea and an important thing to note as bitcoin was actually coming up it foretold that the markets would rally this is really important because bitcoin and crypto are generally not well regarded by many stock market participants that's because they don't understand what crypto actually is and what bitcoin represents bitcoin is an ownership layer on the next evolution of the internet web 3.0 it's not rat poison it's an evolution of the internet and warren buffett and charlie munger didn't get into Microsoft when they should have because they just didn't understand this technology stuff. And Warren himself says it. He really wished he had invested in his best friend's company, but instead he went with Apple. And when we look at the e-mini S&P 500 futures, we can see Bitcoin in this blue line foretelling what would come next inside the stock market. And you can see how well correlated directionally they are. If you're in the stock market and not looking at Bitcoin, you're costing yourself money and opportunities. And please let me know in the comments, what is your percentage of exposure to the stock market? And do you have any specific stocks that you would like me to analyze? 
by applying SL levels, these Stanfield levels, these are dynamic objective market structure levels formed from all of price history, not just recent price history. Just one thing to take a note of, we've had an update in the Fed balance sheet. It continues to fall off a cliff. In the stock market, returns come very slowly. And I spent decades in the stock market before crypto was a reality. And quite seriously, getting a return is like watching grass grow. You have to be very, very patient or you have to leverage with extreme leverage. Bitcoin is currently trading at $17,082. And we can see just how the S&P 500 futures and the NASDAQ futures are in alignment and were foretold what was happening with them by a movement in Bitcoin's directional price. We see this a lot actually when we look back at stock market recoveries. Bitcoin is currently coming up to a dynamic structural level of resistance at 17093. Its current price is 17082. Yesterday's max pain level of 16,500 was completely ignored by the market. Today's max pain level was yesterday 17,000, but today it is 16,750. Bitcoin is currently doing its best to overcome this smart money sell level at 17,093, and it's just about there. We can see resistance is being overcome from a very short term perspective, and the next resistance level, when we get past the 17,093 level, is 17,988. But beware, we always have to think in three dimensional thoughts, and that is what if the price goes down and we consider that first? We have a smart money support level at 16,649. And what is underneath that? Literally 15,758. Remember, these are not formed from recent price action. If we were doing recent price action, we'd say, oh, there is support here at 16,890 and a little bit more here at 16,797. And there's support here. This is a very, very amateur way of looking at support and resistance inside a market. You must mark it up with the CTKS method to reveal structural support and resistance levels. They're the ones that institutions look at. And this is why we always do our daily three dimensional risk management code, which is called a Borsog code. Why is it called that? Buy on red, sell on green, rule 621. This is all about getting onto the right side of the percentage. First of all, we consider what percentage could the market conceivably go down? What probability? And what about neutral and what about up? And we consider up case last, not first. A lot of retail investors and traders always consider the upward focus of the market. This is not what we do. We consider that last. And it's very important because you control the trade or investment, but the market controls the returns based on your active learning, knowledge and courage. Then we boil this up to this first part of the code. Then we think about what it will do if the market moves in this direction. What does it do to our entire portfolio? And how in sync with the market are we? Do we have the Midas touch or the Medusa touch? And remember, the institutions are always trying to desynchronize you from the market. That's how they make their money. And in episode 685, I do a deep dive on this code. Literally, the whole episode is devoted to this. The DXY has been very, very strong recently. And we saw some very interesting behavior. We saw Bitcoin strengthening as the dollar, the DXY was coming up. And then we saw a little bit of a downturn here because we had so much of a rally previously. But the really fascinating thing to note for those people in the stock market, please keep your eye on Bitcoin. Even with the DXY, it tells an incredible story of if the market is going risk on or risk off. Bitcoin is a risk on indicator and crypto is incredibly good at foretelling market turning points as well. When looking at the DXY, we can see in the past trading session, the DXY came back to that smart money buy level at 104,391 and rallied up to the 105,357 mark and was rejected. These lines are formed 
from all of price history, not just recent price history. Considering the correlation between Bitcoin and the main markets, it's often good to do a conservative view on how price may move. And if we get above this SL at 17.093, we're currently 17.087. So Bitcoin is trying, but it, indeed, it's a smart money sell level. So we could see a bit of sell pressure come in here to push price down. So we're considering a worst case, conservative worst case, if price comes down, what could that look like? A retracement back to the 16.649 level. If price just oscillates around the 17093 level, that's just Bitcoin trying to garner strength to make it up to the 17988 level. And if we actually see a push through, we may actually see a lot of liquidations because a lot of stops would be up here for the short sellers. And if these shorts get liquidated, it could cause could cause a massive push up that we're just doing a conservative price estimate here. But please note, Bitcoin and the entire markets, as we saw with the S&P 500 and a variety of others, can just put in this big price momentum. So just keep this in mind. But from a conservative stance, if we get up to around the 17,988 mark by tomorrow, that would be pretty cool. Please let me know in the comments, which way do you think we're headed? Looking at total crypto market cap can give us a bit of an understanding where Bitcoin could go. And we know how predictive Bitcoin is with the major indices when they're trading. So it's really important to understand this as well. We can see the total crypto market cap has been caught by these smart money buy levels at 808 billion and 799 billion. And what we're actually looking at is all of crypto, all 20,000 plus projects in one price chart. Ha, how cool is that? And what we can see is resistance above at 840 billion. And then we get into a lot of resistance and fairly significant resistance at 866 billion and above. With the same kind of conservative methodology, we could see that entire crypto market space comes up to the 840, just rejects it for a while, gathers a bit of strength, creates a reasonable pullback, and then starts to go for the 866. It really depends on how many people have got stops crypto wide above these peaks. When you look at this, it's important to understand just how short liquidations can push price up and long liquidations can push price down. They're not conservative. When these happen, they are chaotic. So we always consider the down action first because that puts our risk management controls in place. The neutral second and the up last. When looking at the longs and the shorts inside the crypto market, we can see the shorts have been coming out of the market, but also the longs have been coming out of the market. We can see a lot of shorts have been liquidated recently. The longs were hit in this period, but this is a sign of a lack of confidence at the current time. As we're getting into weekend trading, we actually can see that there's not a lot of liquidations. 40.52 million across 13,186 positions, which is really small. And over the past 24 hours, about 51% of total liquidations have been long liquidations. About 52% have been short liquidations over the past 12 hours. Past four hours, 96% short. The shorts are getting whacked. And the past hour, 97%. But don't forget, it's really low volume. But that doesn't mean it can't move the market, and it absolutely does. That's why we need to keep an eye on the longs and the shorts. The greatest gainers in the past 24 hours, GMX, up a little over 10%, followed by Lunacy, Uni, TWT, Quant, APT, and Filecoin. And the greatest losers over the past 24 hours, we can see ETHW turning positive now, but it's very, very low percentage losers in the top 100. Phantom, Link, XEN, 1inch, BinaryX, and TON.
Turning to the top eight cryptos and what we do, always look at Bitcoin's gravity. That's that blue line. This is behind Ethereum. Ethereum is moving in directional correlation up and down with Bitcoin's price. This is the way the crypto market works, but a lot of people don't understand it. And when you do understand it, when you see Bitcoin breaking out, you can just go into your beloved alt and just go for it because it's a good thing. But when it's breaking down, of course, Bitcoin will drag your alts disproportionately with it. We can see BNB below Bitcoin's gravitational pull, as is XRP. Doge is also below. But look at ADA. ADA is starting to take off as Bitcoin is taking off. And look at Matic. Matic is so strong. It's a really strong project. And we can see DOT took off previously, just consolidating its gains. And Litecoin not acting with the same strength that it's been acting with recently. Turning to the next eight top cryptos, we can see SHIB doing very well, stronger than Bitcoin's gravity. Tron actually starting to catch up with Bitcoin's gravity. It was a little bit below previously. Solana losing strength, just being probably caught up with the FTX debacle at the moment. Well, it's not a debacle. It's just plain out and out fraud. And what about Uni? Uni was behaving very, very powerfully yesterday. It's continued to do so. And what about AVAX taking off stronger than Bitcoin's gravity? And we can see Link just wobbling around a bit. <laughs> just coming into basic alignment at the moment, as is Atom. And we can see XLM, Stellar, just a little bit below Bitcoin's gravity. You look at gravity because you want to identify strong projects to get into. When they're strong, they continue to be strong for a certain period of time. If you're in to XRP, I just wanted to share some dynamic structural resistance lines at play. XRP is currently 39.45. The weakness in XRP's price is primarily due to these two very strong resistance lines. These are all of price history wide resistance lines at 39.59 and 39.57. There's also one above at 39.84. It's so important to know your SLs, your Stanfield levels, because they're not drawn from recent price history. They're drawn from all of price history. And the update to the CTKS method version 2 is coming to the masterclass December 11th. That's just the drawing component and how to do the SLs according to the new standards. I'll be placing the update as an LV video inside the masterclass. And please keep your eyes on your emails. I'll be reaching out to award the Art and Crypto Turtle Masterclass Scholarships the partial masterclass scholarships. But that's only if you have applied for them. To get the link to actually apply for the scholarship, just come up to any video and just click the more. When you see the more, you will actually see the masterclass, partial masterclass scholarship application form just here. And if you can't wait, you can get and reach out to the ambassadors to get 80% off. And uh, before doing that, I would recommend that you look through the references. And thank you, everybody, for your comments in yesterday's episode. John said about the Stanfield lines, I do periodic updates of the SLs shown on the daily video. These help to see major turning points in the charts. Thank you, my friend. And JT had a really beautiful comment. There is no better way to start your day with a good morning from family community members. A positive start sets the tone for the rest of your daily efforts and contributes to happiness. Have a wonderful day and good luck with your trades, everyone. Very nice, JT. And if you have family or friends who could benefit from positive excellence and what we do here each and every day, please introduce them to our community. By sharing a video, we'd love to see them here. We have one of the best communities on YouTube. And Simman said, SL lines help you to become one with the charts. With mastery, your decisions come from what the charts are telling you and are not based on your own opinion. Beautiful, my friend. It's all about the objective view of the markets. As a community, we're about positive excellence. 
Positive excellence is about sustainable fulfillment, meaning, happiness, and success. We focus on money last. We focus on doing the right things first. And what you'll find with trading and investing, it's all about doing the right process. And the right process is getting out of zone one and zone two through learning and forgiveness and getting into zone three and zone four where we make money and we keep it. But we also consistently increase our happiness. When trading and investing, you're always dealing with loss fear and uncertainty. That's why self mastery is very, very important. And that's what we focus on through positive excellence. I just have a little quote here. Self mastery creates a meaningful life. Aristotle said it very, very well. Happiness depends on ourselves. We can have a raging storm within ourselves or we can have quieter, calmer seas. Both are possible. The CTKS Creed is a series of positive affirmation statements we say to ourselves so that we can guide our mind into positivity. The mind will naturally default to fear-based analysis if we don't put in courage. Trading and investing is literally a mind game. This is what a lot of people don't understand. If we think that the world is against us, that we can never progress, we'll actually realize that in our trading and investing decision making process. If you think you can, or if you think you can't, you're always correct on whatever you choose. So that's why we choose to know that the world is for us. It just rewards our hard work and effort and energy. Because the universe wants you to succeed, you can act every day with kindness, integrity and gratitude. If we don't act with kindness, integrity and gratitude, blame and negativity will overtake our decision making process. That's why we also say in the creed, I know opportunities and life reset daily. It's vitally important to feel worthy. If you don't feel worthy, you just won't put yourself in a position to take advantage of opportunities. That's why we say, I am worthy, I go slow to go fast, and I start small and scale. Everybody gets life pullbacks and some of them can be very, very nasty. That's why we say, life pullbacks give me the strength for the next life rally. There's always another rally coming. And I believe the two most powerful lines of the CTKS Creed, I am dedicated and committed. I win or learn and never blame. When you're trading and investing, fear is first and foremost in your mind. We must do whatever we can to dethrone fear. That's why we talk about the CTKS Creed, because it's just so important. Please let me know what part of the Creed do you like the most? Stay safe out there, my friends. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.